Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 176. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me from the city of Philadelphia, it's Kyle Bailey. Hi, I, I am not in Philadelphia, but my shirt would lead you to believe otherwise. Your shirt's a liar, sir. And joining us, uh, covered in Nickelodeon slime, it's Ian Gibson. Oh, it tastes great. You never got that watching it on TV, but slurp, slurp, I'll eat a whole gallon on it. Hell yeah. Now's our section on feet. Folks, have you ever worn socks? You know, the whole foot thing with, uh, it's got a no, foot shaped pool. Let's, I you don't want to know anything. Let's just keep going. Let's go right over this one. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> the Nickelodeon thing. Anyways, folks, uh, don't sure. trust anyone in Hollywood. Uh, we're here to talk about video games. We're also here to talk about all sorts of lovely little things. In the chit chat section this week, I would like to scream into the void for several hours. Folks, you ever dealt with network issues? Uh, I'm not talking about your LinkedIn's, folks. I'm talking about your LANs, your WANs, your WIFIs, and your height. Uh, I- Rowdies. I don't mean to skip ahead. I know the backstory on this, and I'm so eager to hear. I'm assuming you solved it, so I want to know what the, what the problem was. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have myself. Why don't you describe what what was happening this week? So, uh, starting last Saturday in Fired Emblem, um, my camera kept freezing every like thirty oh, seconds, yeah. and I couldn't figure out why. And I was like, "That's weird." And so first I was like, okay, did I install something that is starting to mess it up? Because it's never done it before. Uh, and I, I, I uninstalled and did some... I was doing some, some... Frankly, I was doing some piracy over the weekend and had to install... <laughs> wow. <laughs> playing Sea of Thieves. Uh, wow. Yeah, I had to buy a new ship on eBay. Uh, <laughs> there you go. And um, I installed some new programs to do that. And some things went higgledy-piggledy. Uh, other people uh, put seeds up of, of cop musicals for me and things like that and so i had to grab them and and update software and everything but um i i couldn't find anything in the system and i had updated a bunch of windows stuff as well so i couldn't really find anything so i moved on to the next thing and then i was like okay so it's happening in obs ninja so i went to the obs ninja discord and i talked to steve who i'm pretty sure is just the creator of uh he's the ninja ninja he's the obs ninja Ninja. it's video ninja now actually uh and we spent like an hour in our thread trying to figure what is happening uh it was showing he was like he was like it's not random because it's literally like you can see all the divisions of where my camera shut off or a camera stopped sending and then started sending again and there's this great uh video dot ninja slash speed test has a fantastic speed testing thing that shows you your upload your bit rate and your packet loss and so basically it turns out no matter what i do uh on my internet i have packet loss through ethernet but not through wi-fi sorry for your loss to, uh, and that's not necessarily a huge bad thing, but packet loss can lead to all sorts of things. It's basically yeah. Wi-Fi is usually you get some, and then Ethernet you rarely get any because it's a direct line. So this has caused me to test every Ethernet cable in my house, my router, and I so far I hate to say this, Ian Gibson, I have not figured it out. It is unsolved wow. mystery. I am currently. My, my camera's looking fine and dandy because I am uh, currently using Microsoft Edge <laughs> to edge myself onto the stream here oh. and show you myself. Um, wow. Although the micro- Microsoft Edge still shows my packet loss at a huge rate, uh, it is not freezing my camera. Just uh, tolerating so I, it better. Yeah, yeah it's mm. weird. So um, I ordered a bunch of new Ethernet cables and... To, I, I, so I also started a new, uh, not part-time, but freelance contract position this week. So I have had zero time during the day to do anything as soon as this mm-hmm. stuff cropped up. So tomorrow or this weekend, I'll have to wait. And I got all these new Ethernet cables. I'm going to run a new 50-foot one out here to see if that's the issue. Um, 
because a packet loss can come from electromagnetic magnetic interference and all this sort of stuff and my long ethernet cable isn't touching any power sources but it is unshielded technically so uh -huh. it could be something in that i have i don't have a computer uh or a laptop with an ethernet port that i can just plug into my router because for some reason the one on my mac does just doesn't work the adapter i bought uh and then i haven't just haven't had time to move either of the big computers out there so uh it is still ongoing i don't know what it is um so this 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 started on saturday right yeah like it started during, on saturday the theoretically the i didn't i didn't use my camera on friday and i didn't notice it on thursday i didn't check the local chat but i'm pretty sure someone on local chat would have said it was happening yeah uh, so, if it was so happening. assuming assuming that it started like friday saturday you may have already thought of this, but like, were there any changes like in your apartment? See, like, did yeah, you do that... anything like? Well, I went and like I walked the whole line to see if there were any power cables crossing it. Like what was causing it? I, I really haven't come up with anything. And, the, and, the, and then at the end of the day, I was like, oh, maybe my something's up with the ONT modem or maybe Verizon's having an issue and I'm getting packet lost through them but I tested the Wi-Fi connection from this computer to the other room didn't have any packet loss uh, mm. on the same video ninja test because I thought maybe the video ninja test was just messed up um, mm. so even that and I also determined uh, on Karen's computer that's plugged into the ethernet it is happening to her as well so it's not something on the computer either um, I just need to get a computer into the other room and test it there and I, and to just see like part of me thinks if any possibility it's the long ethernet cable that runs all the way over here or somehow it's the the ethernet ports on the router got messed up or something and thankfully i bought uh -huh. that router from costco so i could literally just return it for a new one uh yeah. and you don't you don't fantastic. you don't have pets you don't have pets right no no pets so it's not like a cable and karen's really curbed right? the licking so it's definitely not that um <laughs> but yeah so i really don't know what it is it, it it doesn't the packet loss thing isn't something that's infecting my day to day as obvious as to this looks perfectly fine it was just the camera stopping stuff that was messing me up uh and then i don't know chrome also on my computer just won't the the ninja site just won't detect it won't f ever find a camera for some reason uh which is a completely separate issue so uh Did that's my networking any other <laughs> any other browsers other than uh uh edge Did i you only had like edge firefox was just on anything? here so i okay. used it firefox on karen's computer gave the same results but it, it wasn't yeah. it, only chrome was doing the the hiccuping so i wonder if chrome that chrome issue is just something completely different uh or it's like hardware Maybe. acceleration or something. I, but this yeah. this may be me having deja vu. Didn't we have a problem with OBS Ninja like three years ago, and we reached out to that to Steve? I I we remember like reached out to him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I remember, and I'm pretty sure it was like during local chat you told us this story. Yeah. Because it was like this sounds very familiar. It's but funny. OBS. Steve, Steve's I, a good guy. I, yeah. Ninja's so good. I was telling actually uh, when I. In my meeting with uh, when I do next lander stuff with Vinny, I told him about uh, Video Ninja because he he hadn't heard about it, and I was like, I think they use uh, Globe Global Meet. Is that it? That's like funny because that. because he brought it he brought it up on the podcast recently, and I was like, oh, oh, oh. he finally found out about it. So, so yeah. I guess I guess we told him about it then. Uh, yeah, motherfucker didn't even credit me. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll see uh it's i mean it's, it's working now uh but yeah i just it's funny i'm i'm good i'm okay with networking stuff but i'm still not good at it enough that i could have just turned something on on my router by accident like i like oh, have yeah, to yeah. google like you're not what things mean all the time because i'm like yeah. it, it, did i do so like oh uh, yeah so um it, that's my networking honestly, issues probably just an ethernet cable I, I mean, that's what I think, and that's what everyone says. But I, yeah. I and just, you've kind of you've kind of isolated it to that, right? Because that's the only thing consistent between all the failures now. Yeah. So, so I just need tomorrow when that it they're supposed to be delivering it at four to seven a.m., which is great and weird <laughs> that in our dystopia <laughs> world, I love that um, that I have to make someone do that, and I don't have to. I chose to. Um, 
But yeah, I'll test it tomorrow. I'm just going to run the 50 foot all the way out here and plug it in and see what happens. Man, cool. you, you've got to, by now, be... You have to be regretting when you sent me that box of 700 feet of Cat 6 yeah, shielded cable. Literally. literally. I, used, I, I used it like two weeks ago when I was setting up my server, and I was like, you know, I need I need another Ethernet cord, but it needs to be exactly eight feet. And like 10 minutes later, I had an exactly snip, eight snip. foot one I'm that I put together. So pissed off that you have that. Um, oh, that that's from, uh, not Wimbledon. What was it? The US Open that, that yeah. Ethernet is from. So mm. use, use your uh, tennis Ethernet. Um, God, fuck networking issues. Uh, my other story is today I was, so to preface this, Amazon has been hitting the doorbell recently. Uh, they don't, they didn't used to, but, uh, now the new delivery guy is yeah, cheery. Know, so he hits the doorbell. Um, and just a slight aside. I've noticed that this must be a change in cultural behavior. It feels like nobody is ringing the doorbell. We have a doorbell. Nobody rings it. Even if it's I like the neighbors, it like people wanting to talk to us, not deliveries, they knock on the door and I'm like, ringing the doorbell is fun. You should do it. You yeah. Know? You, you should ring the doorbell and people are not ringing the doorbell. It's driving me crazy. Oh, no. Doorbells are great. I love doorbells. Our doorbell uh, has been broken since the day we moved in here and it like clangs rat more uh -huh. than ding dongs. Uh, and then the floor below us. How I know it's ours is broken is the floor below us is perfectly fine. So um, mm. I, I wish it was better. Anyways, I so I got a, a doorbell and I, I went and looked out the window because we have a window overlooking um, my vast empire of the street. And uh -huh. I, uh, I, I looked out and I was like, I don't see an Amazon truck, but sometimes they park on the corner and this makes sense. But in the back of my head, I'm like, I didn't check the Amazon delivery thing. So I go downstairs and this took some time and as i'm coming down the second set of stairs i look out the little window porthole of my door door hole and um uh it's crotch height no uh door hole at the top head height uh one head two eyes height for head. uh so right through that i make eye contact with this lady uh and huh. i was like god damn it I was, was like, this sexual I God, yeah, it's very sexual. Uh, anyways, Karen and I are divorced. No, uh, and I was like, God damn it, it's 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 whatever religious people or something. Oh, and so I, no. I I I make eye contact and I was like, damn it. So I go, I open the door, and this girl, nervous as hell, like absolutely nervous as hell. It's like, um, do you, hi, and I'm like, oh hi. She's like, do you um, do you anxiety? And I was like, okay, so maybe it's some like like disorder yeah. thing going around to get signatures she goes do you, do you think uh, the bible can help people with anxiety and i went <laughs> what? No. no and i i just Absolutely like not. blank and i'm pretty sure i, I said um uh you i woke guess up three hours later I said, yeah they, they were both in my bed uh so there are two ladies out there uh and um he no what did i say god damn it um i was like i think some of the stories in it can help people and she oh, was no. like oh well this is she starts like talking and i just go i'm in a meeting upstairs and she like hands me this card she's like this is a this is a bible class and i was like cool grab the card close the door uh and i yell i yell fuckers in the stairwell and start ripping up the thing i was so <laughs> mad uh, and and it was like i had oh, so much God. sympathy because i remember being forced not to do that but like uh not enforced is the wrong word but like in in church growing up being like oh we're gonna go around and knock on people's doors and talk to people Ugh. and you know the the lady was there was standing on the other lady was standing on the steps watching so you knew she was like the like you can do it like don't be nervous and i just wanted oh, i just couldn't be mean but um <laughs> yeah that was the the other whammy today i was so pissed off because i was in the middle of I wasn't in a meeting, but I was in the middle of like an editing run and doing pretty well. You can uh, say jerking off. It's okay. Yeah, I was jerking uh -huh. off. Uh, uh, and I was just, yeah, I was pissed. But anyways, that's my horrible day. I've had networking issues and, but not with God. No networking issues with God today. No problems with God. No problems <laughs> yeah, with it's God. It's got great connectivity. We're good. There's a Bible class QR code ripped up in my trash if anyone wants it. Oh, uh, we should have signed up. Uh, yeah, that's my nightmare of a life. Uh, so thanks for listening. Uh, moving on to the next section of the show where the games we've been playing 
Uh, let's hit these rather quickly, starting with Ian Gibson. How is the Satisfactory server doing? You know, it's doing pretty well. Uh, we are at the final tier of the space elevator. So basically the way the game works is you get a little bit of technology and then they're like, hey, if you want more cool technology and stuff, you have to deliver X amount of items. And we've done that. It's got to be like probably, I don't know, what would you say, Will, like 25, 30 times throughout the course of the game? Because it's probably three or four per phase and there's eight phases. Yeah, I would say uh, probably close to 30. Yeah. So anyways, we're literally at the last one and we're building the items for the last one. Um, and things are starting to slow down because you have to build these super complicated things, which means you have to. I don't want to say get the tech, but you have to build the factories to build the complicated things. And then you realize, oh, we're, our screw supply is running low. I, so I got to go build a screw factory and then oh, our aluminum's running low. So I got to go, you know, check our aluminum factory, and, you know, optimize that and make it more efficient. And I feel like the other thing that's making it difficult is that Will has stopped playing. <laughs> Mm. I knew you were going to say that. I knew it. Zach's playing. <laughs> I'm playing. Uh. Will stop playing. And you know, if you had quit earlier, I would understand. But we're so close to finishing that you have to come back. Will uh. you have to come back to the satisfactory server? I haven't quit. I I I just don't want to work anymore. No, I, <laughs> I I I don't know. I just something about it. Like I just. Yeah. It just started it to get annoying, it, and then I didn't want to yeah, play it doesn't anymore. Last. And then, yeah, yeah, and basically, I, I was like, "Oh, I'll just wait until they say they're gonna play, and then I'll hop on." Yeah, uh, yeah. but that and we haven't happened, been doing that lately. But, so. Yeah, so maybe maybe tomorrow night. Uh, I, that's why. But I think we just need to get on for a couple more sessions and bang it. I, I unlocked plutonium rods, and now there's like a whole extra tier to the nuclear stuff, which I know you enjoyed putting together our nuclear power plant. So it was um, pretty fun. Yeah, so I we're. We probably have, if I had to guess, maybe eight hours left with all of us working because mm -hmm. um, we're, we're cranking out some stuff there. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I played some Steam Next Fest demos. We'll talk a little bit about that during our news E3 2024 recap section. Um, but other than that, honestly, I have not been playing much. Um, yeah, that's mostly been me. Uh, nice. Kyle, how about you? Uh uh, pretty much the same stuff uh, that I talked about last time I was on, playing some more Mad Max, because once again, my save from the first time I played it did not, apparently it got lost in Steam somewhere, so I restarted thinking, I'm just going to play for an hour, and then every every couple days I keep coming back to it, and it's got really, really good photo mode. The Seriously, the photo mode in that game, it, they did such a good job, it makes everything, What what do you have to say, Will? Oh, uh, did you uh, see the thing about the second controller? Uh, uh, it can it can act as a camera control or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you can like I, control I saw, the photo I, mode in a uh, second controller um, while still I playing. I did not know the about that, controller. which is pretty. So you could technically you could have you could just be playing and then someone else could be like controlling yeah. it for which, which is I think is amazing. wildly cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I wonder if that's like a development. Like they like something they just left over from like when they were patching together trailers and stuff. Yeah, I was just uh, gonna say trail uh, for trailer stuff. That does sound like yeah. That. But uh, yeah, it's it's great. It's fun. It's really pretty. I I love just being in that world. And uh, uh, George Miller is wrong about it being a bad game. I think it's a pretty good game. Uh, he didn't say it was a bad game. He said it didn't live up to expectations or whatever. Uh, then, uh, for some reason, uh, I got the Dishonored kick. I have played Dishonored 1 and 2 and all the DLC multiple times, and I haven't touched them in a couple years. And I was scrolling through my Steam library, and I was like, Dishonored. Uh, it's just speaking to me again. So I'm, I started it, and uh, I didn't get very far, but it's one of those games that I continually come back to every few years and just love playing. And I think it's it's wonderful to spend some time in a weirdly dystopic uh, past future place with really cool... Whale future... Uh, well, well, oil future. Yeah, it's it's great stuff. We should have gone that route. I mean, really, that's that's what we should have done. the whales. That's <laughs> um, uh, so all I have to say about Dishonor. If you haven't played it, definitely play it. Uh, and hopefully there will be more. Oh, wait. There might, uh, probably won't be because of Microsoft. Um, next one is just a demo that is actually... This is uh, part of the E3 recap, um, but it's Fallen Aces. This was on the PC showcase uh 
show or whatever it was called. I don't remember what it was called. The PC gaming show. Um, Fallen Aces is kind of... Uh, I didn't... I'm not going to lie. I didn't even watch the show. I just scrolled through a couple of the trailers, and this is the one that stuck out to me. Um, should I talk oh, about yeah. it now, or should we Should we wait until... Yeah. Should we wait no, until go ahead and talk about section? it, because I don't... Yeah, go for I it. Don't, yeah, uh, we probably we could just talk about it now and not talk about it in the show section. Okay, so Fallen Aces is... Um, it's in early access right now. You can play a demo of it. It's like 15 minutes. It is a first person kind of, it's kind of like Doom a little bit, but it's like, it's got some really nice noir style to it. And it's got great music. Uh, from what I can tell, a pretty interesting, like, you know, ground down story of, of a hard boiled detective working with a kind of masked vigilante as like a almost like a sidekick but it's a beat em up you you use uh all of these different items around you you can throw uh uh bottles and then break them and use them as like knives and shivs and stuff like that you can get like an iron skillet and hit people with it there are guns uh but a lot of the a lot of the uh, combat is environmental based and you can you know use use fists and everything but it's it's sort of a how inventive can you get with the items that are within the level that you're playing uh again really slick it it runs like butter i mean it's not you're we're not pushing graphical boundaries here but it's great just from uh, the 15 minutes that i played and it's one of those things where this is what i love about a demo i actually i've been thinking about doing a video about demos because i think it's kind of a lost art but this is one of those demos where it gives you enough of a slice of the game not just to give you a sense of what the rest of the game is going to be like but it gives you a good it, it sets you up as a player to replay over and over because it it's it's challenging enough that it makes you want to do something different the next time, but also uh -huh. provides you with enough variety to be like, oh, I didn't realize I could do that the first time. I'm going to mm. go back and see. It, like, it, it has a nice bounce back effect. So definitely recommend it. Um, it is done, it's developed by two people, Trey Powell and Jason Bond. No release into Jason Bourne or James Bond, hopefully. But uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> it's on my wish list and uh, it's in early access right now. So go go check it out. Nice. Nice. Um. I don't mean to do a callback to technical issues, but Kyle, I'm hearing a bit of a click in your audio. Are you hearing that, Will? I am also hearing a bit of a click in the audio. Okay. No. So maybe if you can check your audio while Will, tell us what you've been playing. Oh, I didn't even go yet. That's wild. Um, I have been playing nothing at all uh, this week. I, 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 t I played a little bit more of Assassin's Creed 2. I'm, I think I'm almost done with it. Uh, I am remembering a lot more of it than I have, uh, especially with like the codex pages where you have to like solve all the like weird riddles and everything. But mm -hmm. um, outside of that, um, uh, the game's still good. It feels good. And it's just the right amount of like old that is still like pretty good quality of life stuff in, uh, in it. So I'm happy about that. I'm also playing XCOM. Uh, I picked up my save from what I had been streaming, but I haven't been able to stream it. Uh, and I've killed mostly everybody. We finally lost oh Vic of save data. Uh, uh, they uh, they were the last, <laughs> last person standing on a mission against the Exalt. <laughs> and the Exalt, I just mismoved, not mismoved, I, like, I just got caught in a corner and like i was trying to protect those encoders and i got wiped out uh we lost kyle unfortunately i th think we lost jake if i can remember or jake's just the only one i have left i think jake might be the only one i have left uh out of that we we've got a new crop of people and uh we've got about the sixth iteration of karen uh karen prosby which is what the eye doctor <laughs> wrote on her uh prescription so uh i turned her into a character uh we've gotten uh i think i made a couple robots we had paul verhoven uh, came and went uh and a couple <laughs> other ones but XCOM's very good i'm like two countries away if two more countries pull out of me uh i will uh will lose pull out of XCOM. sorry not me i wish uh then uh we're gonna lose the whole game so i think i'm really close i just don't have enough ships to take down the massive uh uh ufo that is like the next uh -huh. kind of mission beat so i'm trying to like arm all of my uh, uh ufos and everything just to to take down the enemy ufos so we'll see xcom's still fun it's a it's a weird 
weird fun game that I adore, and I have the demo from Steam Next Fest for that uh, Wish the Spotlight I said a couple weeks ago that looks like uh, XCOM, and I'm really excited to try that afterwards. But yeah, that's the games I've been playing. Not much. Uh, just uh, just those. Shall we move into the news? Yes, let's move sure. into the news. Did we stop playing the news theme? I feel like we have. And I'm playing the news theme in at least like 50 episodes. I know. I just I keep forgetting to complain, but this is my formal complaint that we should bring back a news theme. Here's the news. It's talking about it's news. It's are you are you playing the news theme? Because we can't hear it. <laughs> I know you can't hear. I forgot. It's too quiet. Oh, there we go. Okay, we heard the end of it. Anyways, uh, it's E3 2024, folks. Um, it's quote unquote done. Not to spoil it, but there is a rumor of a Nintendo Direct happening sometime next week, which if it does happen, would cap off E3 2024. But uh, look, we're not going to talk about all the games. We're not going to talk about all the showcases. There's too goddamn many of them. But what we are going to do is we're going to go through some of the big showcases and touch on some games that uh, we would love to talk about and play and live in uh starting with summer game fest 2024 this was a friday evening show to kick off everything and uh right off the bat something leaked before the show civilization 7 you guys excited for civ 7 yeah i'm very excited i was just was it that conversation that sparked i love civilization 5 6 is great uh i just never got as unhealthily into it as i got into civilization 5 yeah i think i think it's kind of like windows releases well i, I don't want to be that harsh you know how windows releases are like there's a great one and then there's a one that's bad and everybody ignores yeah, like, it Vista's really good seven's bad eight's really good <laughs> <Ten's>. <laughs> i fucking knew that was coming <laughs> um i think i i i I'm not saying it's exactly the same with civ because i don't think civ 6 was bad or anything but when civ 6 hit I had just come off of playing Civ 5 a lot and I gave six, Civ 6 a chance, but it felt like it was too much of the same and it's not a bad game. It just there was no reason to play Civ 6 instead of Civ 5. So now I'm like, OK, I haven't played Civ in a while, a couple of years now. I'm ready for a new Civ. It feels like everybody's kind of saying it's time for Civ 7. Civ 7. Does that make sense? <laughs> Civ seven, <laughs> seven civs and seven seven. He sieved the pasta into civil. I was gonna say civ six got too woke for Ian. Uh, they did. started including lesser too countries, many white people. lesser leaders, too many white people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was something about six. Like, yeah, it, it just didn't hit. But I, I'm really excited for this. That trailer had a couple trains in it, and that's oh, they had that one great section where it was just like a statue in a row of a guy hitting a rail spike in. And it was like going down the line really quick. So it like, oh. it was like the kinda, Halo 3 Believe ad, but it was a giant yeah. statue of just like historical stuff. I gotta great. be honest with you. I I don't want to say I didn't like the trailer, but Civ is like, but that is like Blizzard. They make good cinematic trailers. That's not what I want from Civ 7 right now. I want to see the gameplay. Is it going to be any different? What are the new mechanics, et cetera, that you're adding? And seeing a cinematic trailer is just it's not enough, especially when there's no story element. So I, so I think the actual trailer itself, I'm like, so what? But the announcement, baby. So that, that's a 2025 game. Um, You guys seen Killer Bean? You guys know about Killer Bean? Is this a kid? Oh, yeah. Is this a child's thing or is it our no. age thing? OK, I don't so, remember it. I've never seen it. Kyle, do you know anything about Killer Bean? Yeah. Uh, am I still clicking, by the way? You are, but we can we can roll with it. It's not completely off. Yeah, it's not super bad. Well, I, I don't know what it is because I just listened to my voice on my end and I, there's no clicking. So. Could just um, be Discord then. Yeah, it could. Um, so as far as I know, this was created by an animator from The Matrix. He worked on the special effects on The Matrix and uh, like just did this creation on his own and then they made a game about it that that's the limit of my knowledge other than watching the trailer which i loved uh i'm guessing you have a lot more information i do have a little bit more i i wasn't aware of the matrix connection but there is an entire full-length animated action film written produced and directed by jeff lou that came out in 2008 called killer bean forever so there were there was two web shorts in 1996 and 2000 and then there was a 2008 movie 
and and now they're just oh i'm sorry in 2020 there was an animated series announced and it premiered in 2020 but was then canceled in 2021 and then they've announced the game and now he's doing a game so like look this game looks really awesome it's this like weird hollywood action gta open world type action game but what i'm about to say may sound derogatory and it may be that but this feels like well what's the name is it temple os that religious yeah. guy who's, who dedicated his entire life to making a Christian operating system for, for computers. That's what this feels like. This feels like some man that is like, yeah, Killer Bean's cool. And and he's just become obsessed with Killer Bean. The difference is it turns out he can he's fully capable of making animated movies and shorts. And now he's making a kick ass video game for it. So like it's something weird, but it looks really cool, right? Like I, I like the look of it. Yeah, it's got Roblox energy. Uh, and I mean that in a yeah. good way. Good way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fucking wild. I think at, at some point we are going to have to watch the full 85-minute Killer Bean Forever movie. Um, yeah. Um, real, real quick, is my, is my voice still clicking? No, oh, I think it's better much now. better now. Okay, yeah, oh yeah. I, I switched the, the Discord voice thing was set to default, which is what it has been for the past two years. So I just switched it to my mic input. And yeah, it might have so. just like it might have mm -hmm. just reestablished the connection and gotten rid of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dulcet tones now. That's all we yep. got. Thanks. Uh, also, in the Summer Game Fest, Monster Hunter Wilds. Will, I know you popped for this, right? Uh, no, not at all. Yes, uh, <laughs> it looks really good. Uh, I like Monster Hunter Wild. Monster Hunter World? Jesus. It's plural now. I like Monster Monster <laughs> I like Monster Hunter World. I didn't finish it, but it was really fun. It's the only Monster Hunter I've played and I've enjoyed it. I also like Wild Hearts, which is the EA version of it that came out one or two years ago and I bought yeah. for full price and don't regret it because I played at least six hours. Uh and it, no, I played like fifteen hours. That game was super fun and it had different improvements on the monster hunter uh sort of technique but it didn't like change things largely and from what i've heard in the grapevine of journalists about monster hunter wilds is it takes everything that world did really well and does that again by doing like seamless multiplayer stuff instead of weird archaic multiplayer stuff and <clears throat> and um like not having to load into other zones one big map all that sort of stuff so it just sounds like all those improvements they made on the previous one that i enjoyed so much uh those again so i'm really looking forward to this uh i think cap i didn't know this but monster hunter world is their best-selling game of all time so you it know, makes I sense heard, i did know that because i also just listened to the next lander episode i'm sorry the what i've never <laughs> you never heard of next lander it's no. weird because they have this guy editing their videos they said his name's Will Will Crisby. Do you That's know weird. Uh, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> That's yeah. Weird. Uh, before we uh, leave the Summer Game Fest station, any last passengers you'd like to shout out, Kyle? No, you guys hit uh, all the ones I I cared about. Yeah, two hour show, insufferable, but there were some good ones in there. Uh, next up, Saturday, the Future Game Show. Uh, which I watched. Did you guys see any highlights from this or peruse a list of games here? Anything grab your interest before I dive into my special list? The, the only one is the last one on your list. So I'm good with you. You going through. Hell yeah. What about you, Will? Um, I, I saw this demo after the fact because I, I didn't get to catch this show. But that first dwarf uh, base building tower defense game looked pretty cool. You're yeah. like a dwarf in a mech suit. And it, it kind of gave me Dyson Sphere vibes. Ooh. Um, I don't know if there's any of that automation stuff, but Ooh. you were like using the thing to build stuff up. So don't do oh, that. Fuck, I really man. don't like that. Ooh. Ooh. Um, Ooh. <laughs> Let's play some Dyson Sphere. That game is fucking great. New stream um, series. Uh, yeah, I have a couple Sp games I want to shout out. De Detective Dotson. This is a really cool. So this is a it's 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 weird it's got so much charisma it's a pixel art detective game that takes place in india you're trying to uh according to games radar quote unravel you use parkour in disguise to unravel the mystery of your father's murder unquote 
and um, it just has a really nice charisma and style to it. It seems very playful. It's got a little bit of a side scroller, but it's got some like point and click puzzler elements to it and got some really cool characters and 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 uh, just lots of charm going on. So so this was one of those where I saw it and I said, this is something cool. Um, another one is the operator, which we uh, played a little bit during our Steam Next Fest stream on Tuesday, two nights ago. Um, this is what did, what did I say it was on the it's a federal it's a federal computer puzzler. Yeah, that's a good way yeah. to point it. So you are you are essentially the entire UI is the desktop for an operating system on a federal computer network. Um, we found out a little bit more about this in the demo, but essentially you are running a call center for secret agents in the field. So the secret agents call in. They talk to a person who, who verifies the identity and then they talk to you and they're like, hey, I need you to check this surveillance camera. I need you to, like, identify this person. I need you to, like, tell me this person's phone number. I need you to give me this piece of information. And so you're, like, going around this UI. It showed off really cool. And then, I mean, what would you say, Will? Two minutes into that demo and we're already sold because of how solid it yeah. looked. It was really yeah, neat. It, it just it just this is a sub pixel ass game. It's in, it, it looks really, really cool. And the demo played amazing. Uh, Starship Troopers Extermination. Big news here is they're adding some mechanics and it's going 1.0 later this year. Kyle, you're excited about this, right? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's it's the, your fault that I'm excited for it because we watched Starship <laughs> Troopers for the first time at your house. And, no. uh, you know, Helldivers obviously has helped keep that a little bit alive. But yeah, no, I think this looks good um i'm excited for the 1.0 like that's that's a big step but uh yeah i i'm excited that it's it's happening yeah i um one of the cool things they're introducing is persistent bug bodies so as you're killing the bugs the corpses will stay they're not just gonna guess, disappear yeah <laughs> i guess throughout the whole like hour-long round and i believe if i read correctly they're introducing a mechanic where you can start harvesting the bodies for resources too um, <laughs> oh that's Jesus. awesome so sorry i'm doing a bad job of explaining this so so this game came out in early access earlier it's it gets it got a lot of positive buzz but it wasn't quite ready it was limited in scope and it had some bugs <laughs> pun intended um but wow. essentially it's it's from the developers of squad which is kind of a milsim fps um this is not quite a milsim but it is more of a i think it's 12 to 20 players on a server and you're cooperative and you're defending a base while trying to do some missions and the bugs are constantly coming at you and you're buying resources and uh upgrades and buildings so you're like placing gates and you're placing sandbags and machine gun nests and uh i have not played it yet because i've been waiting for 1.0 all the clips make it seem just like just like the same amount of chaos as in hell divers it's just with base building and there's more people and it's a little bit more chaotic so this this could be very very good i think we should try it when it when it launches 100 percent yeah yeah um will yeah you're a dirty you're a dirty little mammal how about you tell us about goat simulator 3 multiverse of nonsense um karen and i played through goat simulator 3 earlier this year i want to say it's it went to hit game pass and we had an absolute blast with it we 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 try like any game pass game that comes out that is co-op i will download and we will try it at least once uh and it's it's there's a few that have stuck around uh the the one that looks like gang beasts but it's not gang beasts and you're solving puzzles um that one we play a lot uh i really can't think of the name of it uh and uh, uh ultimate chicken horse we play a lot uh, uh wheel of fortune we purchased we play that too much uh and so goat simulator 3 uh we downloaded it and we had an absolute blast with it the game is insane it is a ton of fun you can i, I believe i talked about it on local chat you can do a lot of cool stuff in it and it's just a great co-op game it's a great game in general and it's weird and cool uh, and they have announced a DLC for it, a multiverse of nonsense. Uh, it showed a what appears to be a Thanos glove collecting gems, and you're hopping <laughs> through portals. And there's like, there's all these different like multiverse towns and stuff crashed together in this new new island or whatever. Uh, so I'm really excited to go back into that. It comes out the 19th, uh, so I, I genuinely can't wait for it to come out. It's very fun. Sounds awesome. Uh, anything else from the future games showcase you guys want to call out? Not for me. Awesome. No let's go to 
let's be honest. Uh, there's a little bit of bias here, but this was this was by far the biggest and most anticipated part of the entire E3 2024 weekend. The Xbox Games Showcase on Sunday. Uh, they showed a lot. A lot of people love the showcase. Uh, I've got some hits here we should probably go through. Avowed, are you guys as excited for Obsidian's Skyrim Avowed as I am? I think it looks really yes. good. I think it was a great, a great showcase for them, for sure. Yeah, it's one of those things where I don't mean this to sound mean, but like if I watch the Avowed gameplay in a vacuum, I'm like, you know, it looks OK. It could be fun, but I know Obsidian, right? They did fucking Pentiment. They did. Out. They did Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds. <laughs> okay, okay, but did we remember. figure out? Is it, is it the Outer Worlds? No, it's just Outer Worlds. Outer and Worlds, the, okay. I've seen the Outer yeah. Wilds. Outer, the outer Worlds, wilds. and then the... Uh, every time. And then and they did Fallout New Vegas, so I'm like, I'm like, I don't really care how it looks, because I know there's going to be, like, incredible, like, narrative and gameplay mechanical depth behind it, so I'm... I'm super excited for this. Um, was there anything about this that stood out to you guys that got you super excited about it or looked new or exciting in particular about the latest showing of Avowed? I'm excited for fantasy again. Um, yeah. I feel like we haven't gotten a good... Man, I'm going to say that and you're going to say something, but other Hogwarts than Baldur's Legacy. Gate 3, I feel like we haven't gotten a good first-person fantasy game in a while and this seems yeah, this seems true. like a good world that i can like seep into and corrupt yeah uh with my <laughs> and just you <laughs> know have a good time <laughs> it looks i mean it looks a little uh a little darker than like an elder scrolls game which i think i i can actually appreciate um but yeah i mean just what you were saying ian like with the pedigree that obsidian has and i'm still playing through fallout new vegas I, it, I'm just excited. I just want to get my hands on it. And I'm I'm I, I have a feeling I'm going to have a good time and I'd be surprised if I don't. But yeah, it was yeah. it was a great sh a great uh, showing for it. Last question. First or third person, which one are you going to play in? First, first person. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I think first person, person too. Yeah, uh, that was a reveal, though. They did. They did announce there will be a third person availability. Um, let's talk about kind of uh, a game in the show that everybody was nervous about. Are they going to show it? It sounds like it's not in a good state, but we finally got a good solid look at the initiatives. Perfect Dark. What did you guys think? Gorgeous. Yeah, I think a lot of people were surprised at how um I, I hesitate to say how good it looked, but I think knowing the the trouble that uh, the initiative have had getting it off the ground and and the the rumors that have been swirling around of, of just how there was a bunch of back and forth and they kind of had to rebuild a bunch of stuff from the ground up and um, just the, the trouble that the team was having. I was surprised one at how good the trailer looked like, yeah. like how good it, it, it was implemented but i was also surprised at how fluid everything looked it reminded me a lot of mirror's edge and i know there was like a lot yeah. of it's first person there's a lot of parkour but some of it was really like starkly like oh this is this has mirror's edge dna deeply like embedded in in the the gameplay aspect of it so i responded really well to that i that being said i do still think it's very early um and there's still a a bunch of stuff that they're going to need to work on. Some of the animations didn't quite look a little, you mm -hmm. know, as, as good as they maybe could. It looked a little choppy in places, but despite all of that, I was surprised and I, I like, I'm looking forward to seeing more. I think that's all I can say, but yeah. What about you, Will? Uh, I think it looks really fun. I I'm, I've been waiting for a good, like, it seems like a good first person, uh, like fantasy game. So I'm excited that one of those is coming No, first person, uh, like spy game and, and some of the stuff it was showing it, 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 it is filling the deus ex sized hole yes. in my heart yep. after that yes. previous game got that the new game unannounced game got canceled. Um, and I've been meaning to go back and playing those games for a really long time. So this looks really exciting. I will agree with my brothers on Twitter that they made Joanna Dark ugly when she was hot as fuck before. So no, I'm yeah. just kidding. But I can, I can only, I can <laughs> only tolerate, <laughs> I can only tolerate women in my video games if they give me a boner. Like that's my yeah. litmus test, right? 
Yeah, Duke uh, Nukem. Women only exist for my pla- Okay, we're going too far. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Put that on a shirt. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Women I, only exist. <laughs> <laughs> Women only exist. Um, I, think, I think I was really surprised by this because... You know, I don't have a lot of experience with Perfect Dark. I played a little bit of it on the 64. I played through the entire launch title for the 360 because it was a launch title for the 360. What the fuck else were you going to (laughs) play? And I feel like what I remember from those games is it's a lot of combat and gunplay. Cool guns, cool combat, but it's a lot of combat and gunplay. There was not a lot of that in this trailer. This was a lot. This was a lot of non-combat, a lot of chasing, a lot of uh, scanning, a lot of interacting with tech in non-violent ways. And that really surprised me. That took that. I was not excited for Perfect Dark because I was like, oh, it's just going to be like some tech shooter. Right. And and they're showing like elements of Hitman, like you said, elements of Mirror's Edge, et cetera. They're really making something unique here. I don't know if they're going to land it. I'm kind of with you, Kyle. Like there were parts of the trailer that weren't quite working. It, I'm, I'm worried it may be too linear. It didn't really look like you were making some decisions there. It looks like you were just going doing cool things along a path, which is not necessarily bad, but not necessarily great either. But I think this is what they needed, right? They hadn't shown the game. All the rumors were it's in a bad state. And then they come out with this and everybody's opinion is, is immediately changed. So I, I, I think awesome showing for perfect. Dark. Yeah, agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, which Will said has Will said is the worst Indiana Jones name, and I'm I'm not sure. Well, Kyle, what are your thoughts? Um, name only. Just just as the as far as the name goes, I mean, it's fine. It's it's fine. It's not. It doesn't fill me with excitement, but it's fine. yeah. I don't. I don't think it's as bad as Kingdom of the Crystal Skull because that one is just too long. See, I was going to too long. I was going to say Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is a pretty good title tainted by a horribly bad movie. But just taking it at face value, like, oh, there's a kingdom. But what's the Crystal Skull? It's only I mean, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is only one syllable longer than Raiders of the Lost Ark. So I feel like it's not that long. That's fair. That's but fair. I will say Raiders shortens. Let's see, Raiders shortens to yeah. Raiders pretty well. But, but Nobody calls say, it Kingdom. King, they just say Crystal, Crystal Skull. Oh, Crystal, Crystal Skull. Skull. Yeah. But that's three. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 don't know. I feel like they forgot how to name these movies, right? Because it's the last three that have had the bad titles. You know, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, well, Dial of Destiny, Great Circle. I hate to say that when you said that, I immediately sprang to like the four or five Indiana Jones books I have read. Which was like what are they, Peril what are they of Delphi. Uh, there's another one in that's England. Fun. The Peril of so, Del- Delphi. Wow. Yeah, Delphi. That's a Stargate episode. Or yeah. Delphi. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wherever the place is in in. I think it's Delphi. Greece. Is it Delphi? I've never said it's, it out loud. To be Delta, Delphi. It's a fraternity. And th- there's another book. That it was like Indiana Jones and the Fallen Giants. I think it might have been. It was about Stonehenge. <laughs> what? Maybe. Um, maybe. Maybe Indiana Jones. Is one of those series where you only there's a limited number of good names and they already hit them, and now it's just yeah. shit from here. Well, Indiana you know. Jones and the Chamber of the the Secret Skull, the Chamber of the <laughs> Goblin Fire. Say, I thought, <laughs> you're gonna say Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Indiana it Jones belongs in, the in a bank. <laughs> oh my god! Anyways. I do have my my W two. <laughs> yeah. So Tiger. Anyways, So uh, there was a a Great Circle uh, trailer. It had a little bit of gameplay, but it also had uh, a long story cutscene element. And I got to be honest with you, I was not crazy about the first trailer. I was like, "Ah, it looks like a solid seven out of ten. But seeing machine games really lean into their humor like they did with the Wolfenstein series brought me around. I think I'm excited for this game. What do you guys think? That's Kyle, like, I, Kyle I, really I, looked like he was winding up, so I was like, "Oh, I talked a little bit. I'll let him I go." I was, I, I, Indiana Jones. <laughs> um, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I think the the some of the comedy bits for sure they showed off reminded me of stuff from the Wolfenstein games. I'm I really hope there is some sort of section like in the Wolfenstein games where you play some of the retro Indiana Jones games. I don't know which ones they would choose. Probably like the super nintendo ones maybe uh but uh, i think that'd be really cool that that's a secret side thing that i wish for um i was a little concerned when they were like oh the 
is it the climbing is in third person? I thought some of that looked a little rough when they first showed that off. Um, and I didn't see any of it in this trailer, but I've, I only watched it when it was live. So I wonder if maybe that was something they, they move like cut from it or, or something like that. I don't know, but, uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm more excited for it now than I was after that initial trailer. The title is still awful though. It's a, it's a yeah. bad name and I hope what they lean into it. I, so I, I love Indiana Jones as a film property. That's, that's where my, my heart is with it. I've never played any games that are related to it as far as like any of the one. I think there were a couple of games that were released in the 90s or early 2000s. Yeah, so there's, there's, like there's the side-scrolling yeah. ones and then yeah, that, that's the Infernal Atlantis. Machine, Quest for the Spear, oh, fuck, and then Emperor's Tomb. Emperor's Tomb we is need, a great We need a great list. Game. We need a list. Um, no, so, Get I mean... List. I've also never played uh, any um, machine games games, but I know that they have a pretty good pedigree for first person action. I think it looks impressive. I just I'm a little more like I, I have to get my hands on it first. Also, I will say as someone who in recent years has not been a fan of Troy Baker, I think he's doing a pretty good Harrison Ford impression. Like, I think it's I think it's all right. Is that but- him? Yeah, yeah, I think he's he's doing it. Um, but I am really it. tired of him being in everything. Um, also, I think he's kind of an asshole, but that's neither here nor there. No, that's fair. I agree. Actually, I don't know about the asshole part. I just fucking hate when he's in everything. Him and Nolan North. He, it's like there are other fucking voice actors, people. Uh, I I like Nolan North, but uh, you know, um, it's no. It, what, what were you gonna say? Uh, I was just gonna quickly say sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to derail it. Uh, Nolan North uh, is the voice of Desmond in the Assassin's Creed games, and it totally caught me off guard. <laughs> I was like, "This is like pre him being very famous," and I was like, yeah. "Oh, it just, whoa!" Uh, it just reminds me of so I, I I was looking up a movie from the early two thousands that I had talked to Will about, and I posted the trailer. Uh, and I, I started watching the trailer and I had to turn it off 30 seconds in, even though I love the movie because it was the early two thousands, the slash late nineties. So it had all, all it voiceover had, narration, it had generic trailer narration voiceover. And that's what it feels like. Every time I play a fucking game with Troy Baker, or Nolan North, it's like, here's the generic <laughs> voice in the game, you know? So nothing against them personally. It's just, I hate when, I hate when an industry leans too much on any one thing and that becomes everywhere. I, yeah, I just take the Chalamet. Happens. Yeah, zombies for like the mid 2000s and, and, and still and still now they're still, still making zombie games. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyways, um, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Uh, holy shit. Uh, Will, what are they adding? Water, fire, water oh, drops. Yeah. Fire breathing, water bending, Air bending. Uh, <laughs> yeah. blood Helicopter, bending. helicopters, uh, air Helicon traffic Narsis. control. Passenger flights, commercial flights, the twin towers, the, racing. the um, the the uh, water rescue thing, right? The, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the water rescue, rescue. Yeah, yeah. Fire. This we looks, did firefighting. This it looks, looks so sick. fucking it looks cool. really good. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, yeah, Microsoft Flight Simulator, very very good. Um, I'm glad they're taking another shot at it and just kind of building on what they've already got. Um, any other games you guys want to hit for the Xbox Games Showcase? Shout out to State of Decay 3. I'll be more excited when you have gameplay. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I think they did have gameplay. Did they have gameplay? A little bit. bit. Next episode. It's the third in the series. What do you think it's going to look like? It's going to look like. I know. I'm just very excited for it. I just hope they make it good. And also, shout out to uh, Adam Fall, made by Rebellion, who makes the lovely Sniper Elite and uh, Zombie Army Uh games, as well as that Strange Brigade game that people liked but it, it didn't do it very well this looks really fun adam fall and i'm excited for it yeah i don't mean to put on my xbox fanboy hat but watching this showcase and knowing that a majority of these games are coming out on game pass day one which basically means they're free because i'm already subscribed to game pass was a, mm-hmm. an incredible feeling because because it immediately takes out the first thing you have to ask with any other game showcase which is should i buy this game is it is it selling me whereas now i'm like fuck i'll play that day one i'll I'll give it a shot i'll give it a shot there's zero zero barrier to entry to trying out these games because they're on game pass and i i know it gets a little bit tiresome that everything they're like day one on game pass day one on game pass but 
holy shit, does it make a showcase much more enjoyable when you're not constantly thinking, do I spend money on that? It's just it's not a question in your head anymore. It's fantastic. Yeah. Very All right. Uh, will we watch the PC gaming show together? Right. True. We held hands for that one. Um, what is Ale Abbey? <clears throat> Ale Abbey is an abbey where you make beer. Uh, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was, it looked like Pentiment a little bit and you were making beer and you were monks and it, you had, you're brewing different types of beer to satisfy different things, make it hoppy, make it, uh, whatever you want. That beer tastes good thing. It's that, that 2d, 2d side view base building, like fallout shelter, Terraria, XCOM, etc. Uh, it just looks really cool. It just looks like a cool little indie game that's doing its own little thing. <laughs> Uh, and that looks really awesome. Uh, Will, do you remember Southfield? Uh, that was the place below Northfield, but remind me. That's right. Yeah, it's just below Northfield. Um, you know, now that I look at this, it's a terrible name, but this is the game where it kind of looked like Slime Rancher. And oh, uh, yes, and you got little goobers and you're like farming the Tribbles. goobers and you got little goobers around you. Yeah. And it also looked like uh uh, Viva Pinata in a way. So, yeah, it just it just looks like a really cool little farming crop automation game. But you have these like weird blubbery goobers that are helping you out. And it just looks so cute. Southfield definitely looks awesome. Um, Mars Tactics. Will, you you already knew of this game, right? This was my first time yeah. seeing it. I want to say it was a. I want to say it was a wish the spotlight, but maybe I, I would get so angry. It may have been. Uh, it, it may, may have been. been. Uh, but yeah, it's basically uh, the, the part I didn't know about it is you were like base building, managing uh, Mars Corporation, I think. So the weird so the weird thing is that felt like so for me, it felt like that was the main game is that you're at a macro level managing like your Mars colony and doing a little bit of base building and and like trading with other colonies but you can take over other colonies and as soon as you do that it goes zooms all the way in and now you're in a fucking turn-based tactics game which yeah. is wild they had a particular shot where it was like it was macro level and then they were like attack the base and then you're like assign three guys and then it zooms in switches over and all of a sudden you're in that tactics view and that fucking blew my mind i love hybrid games and there was some terrain deformation as well with grenades. There was yes, like tossing yes. grenades back if like something. So I, so it, it looks really fun. It's got a great cute little art style. Um, so I, I'm genuinely excited for it. Hell yeah. Uh, it looks um, very good. Death Sprint 66. Did you happen to see this one, Kyle? No, I missed this one. I, I didn't, I didn't watch the PC gaming show. I just looked through videos which is how i found out about fallen aces so all of this is new to me but tell me about gotcha. Death so death print 66 is the one that is basically cyberpunk themed mario kart but you're running and you're not in a vehicle you're just running oh, yeah. and you're picking up power-ups and throwing them at each other um but other I than like that, that it's pretty much, pretty much mario kart it has an incredible look the hands-on previews people say it feels and plays really well and I'm I, I love cart racers, especially when they're well done and there's just not enough of them. So I'm I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Will. Baby, how would how would you describe oh. Space Station 14? Oh, man. Space Station 14 is a game where a heck of a lot of people get into a server and they it's basically GTA roleplay servers. The the OG GTA roleplay server that is also among us and there are you just have a regular job or you're a passenger or you're the captain of the space station or any job at a space station and you're role playing and you were trying to escape after something bad happens which is whatever number of players are the bad guys or like uh -huh. like terrorists or whatever i don't actually know how that aspect works uh and you were just hanging out on the ship and ian was on the ship uh, when we played the demo and then he just got shot and then uh, grenades went off it blew off a section of the space station it there were a lot of people gasping the for air the, they couldn't unlock the like doors to get access to them uh, it was wild it was uh, there was just a guy playing his guitar on the other side of the door <laughs> yes. uh, where people are dying 
uh, but remember, wailing out. I don't mean to do story time, but the, but the guy's name was something like Rockstar McGee or something. And and he <laughs> when we first came across him, we were at the entry area. We just gotten off the shuttle, and he comes running through. He's playing a guitar, and we can hear it. And he's dragging a grand piano behind him, yeah. <laughs> and he's he's like dancing around and doing stuff. And then he goes to get in the shuttle, and to get in the shuttle, you have to go through an airlock. So there's two doors, right? So he goes through the first door. It cycles, and then the shuttle on a timer it, it like leaves every 30 seconds and the outer door opens just as the shuttle leaves so he just gets ejected into space and and not realistically but incredibly hilarious he, we, we the guitar music becomes muffled as we as we see him gasping it literally says like rockstar gasps rockstar gasps and he's just like slowly floating and the music's still playing like and he like he was like and he somehow like over 30 seconds like swam back to the airlock and came back inside and the piano stayed outside and will and i were just like what the fuck did we just witness <laughs> such a weird game. Game. if i had to describe space station 14 i was thinking about this earlier for me it is it is dwarf fortress but sci-fi on a space station it's round based so i think the rounds last about an hour and Every person on the space station is another player. Like we joined a server with like 80 people on it and they each have their own jobs, their own objectives. Some of them are antagonistic. A lot of them are literally just like you're the janitor. You have to clean shit up. And that's it. It really just feels like multiplayer sci fi dwarf fortress. Mm. Um, and I'm excited to hop back into it. So Space Station 14, the reason why I was in here is it's uh, it's in early access. They just kind of open up a big play test. This is uh, it's free to play. It's a sequel to Space Station 13, which was a game from the early 2000s. And it was popular in the 2010s as well. But it was a browser based game. It kind of ran on a difficult engine and it was hard to play. Um, but it, it had a very big cult following. So this is kind of the sequel to it where they I think they programmed it in C sharp and it runs through steam and it's just a lot easier to get into now. So excited to play more of that. Uh, cool. anything else on the PC gaming show you want to shout out? I just looked at the trailer for death sprint and it looks awesome. It looks yeah. right up my alley. So we're, yeah. we're definitely going to try that one out. Screen bound will be cool. Yeah. That's yeah. the that's 2D, the... 3D game. Yeah, two D, three D platformer. Um, speaking like, of up your alley, Kyle, how did Star Wars well, Outlaw Outlaws look to you? Visually, I think it it looks nice. Massive know how to make a, a nice looking game. Um, I still think there are some weird inconsistencies, it, even this far along and this close to launch. Some of just like the the voiceover was not syncing with the mouth movements of the characters. And I was like, uh -huh. huh, like that's weird. Like normally stuff like that doesn't really like speak to me when I'm when I'm watching it, but I really noticed it this time. I also think it's not a bad thing, but it definitely looks really arcadey, which I can appreciate, especially some of the yeah. spaceship combat. Uh and people were saying, oh look, this this does um this does what Starfield couldn't do. And you can like go directly from space to a planet. And I'm like, there's still a loading yeah. screen. Like I, you're, yeah. all, all you're doing is getting closer to the planet before there's a loading screen. Um, and I, this is, this is another weird, I, this might be me. And again, I don't know anything very much is at it all. Because about, it's, it's a, it's a female protagonist. Is that the problem? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I've sworn off women, you know, so like, I don't want to play as one. Um, no, actually, it's it's to do with the UI. I think the UI looks too clean. It 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 actually stands oh. out like too much from the game, and it's got this weird. Th th there's a thing where she mm -hmm. looks through the 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 Star Wars binoculars, whatever they're called. I'm the sure they're called star star noculars and like the screen of the binoculars is fuzzy and there's like ui elements in there that are fuzzy and then on the outside it's like this stark white and blue text that is like press x to do this and all the oh, to yeah. use like a to use like a filmmaking term it's like there's diegetic ui where like the character would be seeing it and then the non-diegetic ui which is meant for the player really stands out and i wish that they like dirtied it up a little bit or made it match a little bit more it just looks too like clean and slick and like yeah. like i uh, like like uh, uh like corporate branding almost they picked a really nice font but i'm like it's too nice for star wars 
Um, so it's just it's got this weird and which is something I didn't have a problem with with um, Jedi Survivor. I thought that the UI in that was was wonderful, but it yeah. didn't feel like it it took me out of the experience. But just from the the gameplay stuff that they did, um, the, that ten minute uh, slice that they showed, I, I I don't know. I mean, I'm I'll try it, but I don't have high hopes because I I don't know. It just it's something about it feels weird, and it's a Ubisoft uh-huh. game, so I'm not I'm yeah. not I'm not super into it. I feel like I feel like for me personally, this looks good because it doesn't look like shit which the rest of the Ubisoft games look like. Like, it's such a low <laughs> bar to clear for, for Ubisoft now that I'm like, oh, this looks like a solid seven, which is a compliment for, for I would, Ubisoft. I would, you know? say, I would agree with that. I do think, I don't think it's going to be a bad game. Mm-hmm. And as far as graphics go, I think it looks great. Like, if you, if any, did any of you play Avatar? Frontiers of no. Pandora. But no, it was gorgeous. I, I will stand by saying that's probably the best looking game that released last year. It's that's what I've heard. Yeah. Beautiful. And I, I you know, the massive will do a good job of making it look great. But as far as the rest of it, I I can't say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Will are you you're a big Star Wars hater? No, you know, I used to be a You're wearing ginormous... a shirt. You're wearing a Star Wars shirt. I am wearing a Star Wars shirt. I'm wearing a good Star Wars shirt. Also, I just realized um, together we we are red, white, and blue. We're we're very pro USA today. Yeah, I mean, I'm pro USA every day, you're not. <laughs> not normally. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, good point. Not for 4 years a couple of years back. Um <laughs> uh I used to be a huge Star Wars fan, uh, and then, honestly, I hate to say this, and it lines up pretty well, but when they started introducing... Wh- no. Um, when, uh, <laughs> when Star Wars got bought when by Disney... When Leia came around, yeah, I, was, like, I was out. Uh, when when, they when Disney room, bought Star Wars, happy. I kind of I kind of checked out after Force Awakens. Um, I enjoyed yeah. the Last Jedi. I, I liked I like some of the stuff that's come out, but I really don't watch anything or consume anything, so... I watched a little bit of these trailers as they were happening. The Ubisoft Forward I just had up, and it looks interesting enough to me. But it, it just feels like a game I'll play uh, when it hits Game Pass, which is what I did with Fallen Order. Not Fallen yeah. Order. Yeah, is that the first Jedi Survivor? Whichever one was first, um, and I haven't played the second one yet. Uh, so I think it looks fun. I, I like the new things they're doing or purportedly to be doing, saying they're doing. But I'll find out when the game comes out. But yeah. I'm not. I like Star Wars stuff. Uh, I like Star Wars stuff when it's not explicitly Star Wars, and hopefully that game, this game, can pull it off. But they've already showed off Job of the Hut a lot, and I feel like and Lando Calrissian, which is a, I feel which like is they're a not going to do it. All the Jabba yeah. stuff is is like an additional yeah. DLC you have to buy, it's which like, I think is ridiculous. Just, and they showed a stormtrooper. It's like they have to reference the movie. No, <laughs> but uh, I just you know Andor did such a good job, and I think oh we shouldn't always oh, you, hold you the candle for the you best thing Andor. Ever. Oh yeah, Andor's fantastic. We watched yeah, it a Andor's while great. a while yeah. after the show, yeah. but it's awesome. It's like Karen asked me about Acolyte, and I was like, "Well, I've heard some good things. I've heard I've been reading Kyle's reviews every time it's he fine. posts every week. And it's like on, since it's on, fine on Fortune, but I like I just yeah Fortune. I just want to wait. <laughs> like I I do, I want to wait till the show is out and done, and wait like three months, and then see if it's worth going to. Like yeah. that's that how I watch the healthy thing to do. Yeah, like. The I, old, just, like, I just don't have I know, the energy to be a Star right. Wars fan anymore. There's too much no. shit. It's like I it's like with the boys just started up again and that that's weekly. But I'm like, I like the past yeah, three wait. seasons of the boys. I know it'll be good, so I'll tune in I might as well tune in weekly. Same with like House of the Dragon. See but I, I other I stuff like, I'm like, uh maybe I'm not. I like the weekly showcases so long as it's a show that I enjoy. If it's if yeah, it's a show yeah. I don't care about, I'm fine binging it if I'm interested at all. Exactly. But like with the accolade, like oh man, everyone's so toxic now. And like I don't like what Disney's done with Star Wars overall. But like it, I don't know. I feel like Disney took Star Wars and they corporatized it to the point where if they do anything that George Lucas wouldn't have done, even if it's like two percent past what he would have done, everyone's like, they're so brave. They're so brave for doing that. And I'm like, they're not. This is like George set the precedent for this. Uh, I I don't know Star Wars. I I it feels like an X. Like it it's just like yeah. Like I'll check in, oh, see yeah. how they're doing every once in a while. But like I really don't. They're they've got their own life. So 
Yeah, yeah they, they keep yeah. having an over. They had an oversaturation problem. Same with Marvel, and then they were they were cleaning it up a little bit. But then Andor did really well, and they were like, oh, 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 oh we can make shows again. <laughs> and then they haven't done well since Andor, and it's like, and then to, ah! and Tony Go yeah. Tony Gilro was like, I'm only doing one more season. Then you're on your own. So it's yeah, just like so, it, it's just like uh, literally the embodiment of quantity over quality. Like it feels yeah. like they had no quality gate on any of this shit. And they're just like, pump it out, pump it we, out, pump it out. We, for yeah. years, we were thirsting for a star Wars thing. <gasps> George Lucas is making the course on underground oh, show. <gasps> this is star happening. This show. is happening. With like, you were oh. just, uh, he's shirtless. Uh, you were just waiting we have, like, for something of them now. You know? Yeah. And it's just like all yeah. bad. And it makes you, instead of like being like, Ooh, let's peek around this corner of star Wars. It's Ooh, let's peek around this corner. Oh, it's connected to the Luke Skywalker hallway. That's weird. They're all connected to the Luke Skywalker hallway. How are we getting wow. here? It's so like, they all have women uh, in them. <laughs> still, still upset about that. So Bobo the, the, freak the, acc the, accolade has, the accolade has space lesbians. And I'm like, what about the space gays? <laughs> come on. Like, what the hell? Like, come on. I got so fucking mad the other day. Cause I remember something leading up to, um, which one has the pog in it? The the little penguin guy. That oh, was, uh, uh, last, last Jedi. Jedi. Last Jedi. Last Jedi yeah. Right? Do you? Bog. I don't know if you saw this. Boggers. When that trailer came out and the little penguin guy popped up, it was like oh. there was there was a Twitter that there was a tweet that went around on Twitter and it was some some fucking millennial couple in their late twenties, early thirties who were just like, we got tattoos of it, and it was like the movie's not even fucking out yet. <laughs> like, like what the been, fuck are you doing? What if that was one of those things that was only in the trailer and like they cut it from yeah. the movie? <laughs> I was literally just like, why the fuck are you sucking corporate dick like that when the movie's not even out yet? Like, dear like, lord, like the pog. <laughs> could have been space hitlers do you have no idea yeah, they, had they no could idea. have like murdered luke and i will say tattoos on their legs for it i will say the did you did you guys see rise of skywalker the 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 last of the sequel trilogy yes, or whatever unfortunately. Unfortunately. yeah so yeah it's it's awful it's a terrible movie but the best character in that movie is babu frick that little oh, mechanic well, guy who just goes Babu hey hey we were <laughs> yeah. watching little women and there's a really emotional part of the the new greta gerwig <laughs> little women and the theater over to us it was like at the pinnacle of this emotional moment we just hear hey, hey and it was like perfectly timed it was so funny and i was like thank you jj abrams for, for making this that's possible. incredible <laughs> oh babu right. we love babu let's uh <laughs> Let's wrap up the E3 segment with something I do want to shout out that I missed, but was in one of the dozens of showcases that happened. UFO 50 is real and it's coming out on September 18th. Will, how would you describe UFO 50? I would describe UFO 50 as a as a game collection. Uh, I believe in the canon of the game, it is a bunch of games that were made by a company called UFO. And they were like lost or something. I'm not quite sure. Yep. And like you are, you're opening this collection of all these games. Uh, and they are yeah. full. Uh, is a hundred? Is it fifty or hundred and fifty? It's fifty games, right? It's fi it's <laughs> will. I'm, I'm fucking I, with I you. I'm fucking with you. Forty nine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's Ooh. it's fifty full featured video games. Uh, yeah. By, complete by start a to variety, finish. By a, by a variety, variety of, of developers. Yeah. yeah. Oversaw by Derek Yu of Spelunky. Yeah. But but basically, this shit was and announced. Did we look up when this was announced? I want to say like 2017 like or something. Years, 18 years ago. It was announced in the womb. Yeah. And and it's such a cool idea. I've been waiting for it. But like Will said, there was a little bit of hands on time that people got. And they said they were super surprised by how full featured each of these games were. They were not just like shitty little two minute games. They were like, oh, there's actually like a decent amount of like depth to this game and it feels really cool. And there's fucking 50 of them in here. So I'm super excited. September 18th. I cannot wait to play this. My only regret is I kind of wish this was on. I don't I think it's only on Steam. I would love for this to be on Switch. This is a fucking Switch game if I ever saw one. Mm um but yeah it looks amazing kyle i you heard about ufo 50 only just right now but it looks really good i just added it to my wish list so j just just to confirm the the story is that this is like a game pack that's released from a publisher in game 
of like lost yes, games I but in reality so, yeah. it's just a bunch of games made by a bunch of different developers correct yes cool. yeah okay yeah um, I be- yeah so yeah i believe really the company cool. it's the dev is called ufo but okay. I, I don't know this is fake the fake right. dev or something yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it looks cool yeah. I, I see some see some uh shmups that yeah. uh, jake might like but yeah this looks great yeah I'm i'm super excited for that uh well let's round out the news section with some bad news uh two layoffs this week one at the sumo group who's laying off 15 percent of its workers and vr chat is laying off about 30 percent of its staff uh congrats uh fucking congratulations in a way we've hit 10,800 layoffs in the games industry in 2024 which is more than the entirety of 2023 damn it's a fucked up world folks sad uh- I also saw a Sumo Group announced like four or five games during not E3 and then cut oh, a bunch of well, people. Well, they're finished now. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah, they're done. The, you know, the CEO was watching talking. and he goes, wait, those games are done? done? Fire them, <laughs> quick. Get HR on. Yeah. Get them off the payroll. <laughs> it's fucked. Um, yeah, so we are, we're not even halfway through and we're already more than last year. Uh, hopefully this will slow down. Uh, I I do look. I hate to say it, but I do at least appreciate Jeff Keighley saying the words layoffs and recognizing the state of the industry at the beginning of the Summer Game Fest showcase. I don't know if you guys saw the beginning of that. Mm-hmm. I had him um, on mute. That's fair. Um, it's better than what he did at the Game Awards. So it feels like we, it, it, amidst all this sadness, I am glad that the outrage is this public and this loud. That is kind of the least I can hope for given the situation. Uh, that's going to do it for the news. The colossal news section back over to you, Will. Thank you, Ian, for tackling news as always. I popped in this document this morning and there was literally one thing, which is a story I put earlier in the week. And I was like, I panicked because I said, is Ian not on tonight? Like what what is happening? And then, (laughs) uh, I checked it like 20 minutes before the stream and you had cleaned up your act. Thank God and put some real news in here um <laughs> folks that's gonna be it for the show i am just gonna hit the button because i'm i want to read more foundation uh so i'm gonna hit this one folks that is the show thank you so much for being here i have been your host will crosby that has been the lovely and wonderful kyle bailey you can find him on the internet at kyle of the beard Whew, i almost confused yours with jake and that wouldn't have made sense that would have been, uh, been fine would, Ian Gibson is also here. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at Think Gibson. I uh, was well, yeah, at Hunt270. Subpixelfilms.com is where you can find our link tree to all sorts of cool stuff. Someone recently purchased another uh, Malevolent Creek veteran hat. So if you want one of those, head on over to our Redbubble uh, where you can get all sorts of delicious and yummy items. We'll be back not this weekend, but Tuesday with something. Local chat next week, as always. Uh, more Fire Emblem uh, next week. Sorry I missed it this week, but I was literally pulling my hair out last night and it was it like 7 30. And I, I wouldn't have yeah. been there. Yeah, Kyle was going to miss it anyways. Bye.